Good morning and welcome. I am thrilled to be a part of this, our third and final Voices of Leadership Studio series this morning. My name is Bev Greenberg. I am an adjunct professor in the Department of Communications here at Mount Mary. And again, I'm delighted to be here as this morning's guest moderator. The studio series was created by the Women's Leadership Institute at Mount Mary in support of its mission to inspire, educate, and support women as transformative leaders in service to our communities and the world. We're so fortunate to have three very dynamic women leaders share their stories of excellence with us this semester. Our hope is that you will hear these stories, dig a little deeper into them, and make them your own so that you can go on to create whatever it is you want to create. At the Women's Leadership, we feel it is a place where potential becomes purpose. And we're thrilled to have all of you with us here today. The Women's Leadership Institute also ha believes that all of you have tremendous potential. Remember that the studio series is just one way that you can discover your own purpose. And now please join me and focus your attention on our screen as we have a brief introduction of today's speaker, Katherine Jackson. We do something like this. I got started about a year and a half ago. I was working at Neiman Marcus, like high-end store, luxury um, goods, and a lot of the customers were spending a lot of money on shoes. But the soles were getting damaged really quickly. And then I looked through my closet, and I'm like a big shoe freak, and noticed that all of my shoes were scuffed up. So I thought there should be something that women can buy that will preserve the life of their shoe. Rows and rows of shiny pumps just staring back at me. These are a few of just some of my favorite shoes. And you can see, like, this is a pair of sevens. They make shoes. And I wore them, like, a couple times. You can see how damaged the soles are getting. This is probably about after three wears. This was before I thought of protector pumps. So these are really damaged. I protected one and then didn't protect the other. So this is probably about three wears, and you can see the sole on this one pretty much looks brand new, and this one has like been through a little bit of damage and is really dirty and kind of dingy looking. My clientele is mostly women who love shoes, which is pretty much all women. Uh, <laughs> it really just women who want to keep their shoes looking new, who want to protect that investment. It's unique because you can use this product and keep your original sole without having to put like a fake rubber sole on or get your shoe resold. You're just able to keep the, um, the look of the shoe and the way it came. It feels good and I think there's just like a really cool community of people in Chicago who make things. Um, and since I've started the business, I've been able to kind of interact with them. And so it's really cool to be a part of that. Things that are made in Chicago. Please help me in welcoming our speaker today, Katherine Jackson. Thank you. Katherine. Thank you. It is so nice to have you here today, and it's great to see you again. Your story is exciting on so many levels, not the least of which is you're from Milwaukee. You moved to Chicago briefly, and now you have moved back to Milwaukee, and your company is actually headquartered here. And I know you are also a lawyer coming from a family of lawyers. Tell us about that. I am, yeah. Like you said, I'm from Milwaukee, born and raised. Um, I'm just very fortunate to have two great parents who always supported me, who, who valued education. My mom just walked in. I see her back there. <laughs> Hi, mom. My, da <laughs> my dad is over there in the like third row back. So I'm very grateful to them for everything that they've just taught me and instilled and always believed in me. So they're the reason I'm here. Oh, that's such a nice <laughs> tribute and appropriate. And I know someone else is here as your guest today who also influenced the startup of Protect Your Pumps. Would you like to talk about that? Yeah, so I'm a client of Wibbick. I'm not sure if people are familiar with Wibbick, but the Wisconsin Women Business Initiative Corporation, and they help a lot of women start up businesses, minorities, um, 
in the state, all around the state of Wisconsin, and my small business counselors here, Athena. Agademus, I, I, I practiced, I promise. So um, she's here, and, and Wibbick has been great. Um, they've been able to help me financially, but just in terms of support and advice and just getting me through the process of starting a business and continuing to grow it. So Wibbick is just a great resource. So who keeps you on track? Who inspires you to keep going? Or are you inspired to keep going every minute of every day? Oh, well, I think there's a lot of different things that inspire me. Obviously, like the goals personal that I have, um, wanting to help other people tap into their entrepreneur startup, that inspires me. My customers inspire me. People who love the product, who are supporters, they continue to inspire me. Obviously, my family and friends and people who just support and believe. Speaking of customers, you have some great customer stories to share. Would you like to tell us about some of those? So I started, I mainly sell on the web. So I have customers and we just hit probably 78 countries that the product is sold mm. in, which is amazing. And I just remember the first time it, I had an order from Australia or somewhere really far that I thought was cool. And I used to write notes to my customers and connect with them. And I've really been able to form relationships with many of them. Some of them have made videos on the web they hand out cards to their friends, they write blog posts, they do all kinds of things. They get, get connect me with store owners to get the product into stores. So it's really like an army of people who supported from the beginning, who really help move it forward. So I'm just grateful for that because it's all been very organic. You were so smart. You started a blog, correct? And what do you call that blog? Skipping in stilettos. Skipping in stilettos. <laughs> and of course, you mentioned earlier, who doesn't love shoes? Absolutely. We are all shoeaholics. So how did you get the title, Protect Your Pumps? Well, I just said, what is this going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just said, what is the product going to do? And um, you know, that really is what it's about. It's about protecting your pumps. I have a you know, I have customers who are high end. They maybe they'll wear the shoes once, maybe they'll wear them twice. But I also have a lot of women who, you know, they saved and saved for this one pair of Jimmy Choo's or this pair of shoes that cost four or five hundred dollars. And to them, like it's really important that they take care of the investment. So it's great to connect with them because you know a lot of them just don't have money to throw away. So it's important for them to keep these shoes looking good. So we protect pumps. You've been in business for about a year and a half. Is, uh, Almost three, three now. years. Three mm -hmm. years. And in the Field of Dreams movie, you and I earlier spoke about that quote if you build it, they will come. However, you've learned a different lesson, a different take, if you will, on that quote. Can you share that with us? Yeah, I, I guess I say if you build it, they will come if you go get them, right? So <laughs> it's like all about marketing. You know, I thought I have this the most amazing company, the most amazing idea, like I'm gonna put it on the web, I'll do a million the first couple months, easy, right? Oprah will love it, everyone will know about it. <laughs> but it's really like you have to go and get people and you have to market and you have to hustle and you have to go out there and find people because it could be the best thing in the world, but if no one knows about it, it's just the best thing in the world that you know about. Brilliant advice. You have to tell people, and you've worked on that over the past three years successfully. And so I congratulate you. Thank you. Uh, someone once asked another writer, if you had to describe yourself or your essence in three words, what would those words be? Oh, man. Um. Ambition, I just want to keep going. I'm just always looking for what's next. Um, passion and... That's important, isn't it, to love what you're doing? Yeah, and persistence. And persistence. Those are, I used to call them the three P's of anything. Patience, persistence, perseverance, passion. Clearly, you're passionate about your product. You work a lot. You've had to invest time and resources into this business. How do you stay balanced? It's always that, what do I do to relax? What hobbies do I have? You have a great formula for that. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. And I think I struggle with that, especially at the beginning, because it's all consuming. And 
it's you don't shut it off it's not a nine to five it's just a wake up at three in the morning you think of something it's always on your brain you can't sleep um and so i think i've just tried to do more things spend more time with my family i'm training for this Iron Man with my cousin who's crazy. I don't know why. <laughs> but that that keeps me going and like working out and doing things that I like and traveling when I can and just having a life, you know. So you don't it's not like protector pumps is your existence. It's what you do. You love it, you believe in it, but you have more about yourself as well. So exercise is good. And in the morning, how do you stay focused? You told me about something in the morning and at night. Yeah, so, so I obviously, like most of us, are like attached to my phone. And I use so much of my time is on social media because I market Instagram is really big for me. So I'm always on my phone, right? And I just really started doing this a while, a few months back actually. And I just don't check my phone for like the first 30 to 40 minutes when I get up great and I don't check it for 30 to 40 minutes before I go to sleep because you really don't want to have the thoughts of the outside world dictate how you're going to start your day or how you're going to end your day and if you wake up and you roll over bed and you see oh this is where Kim and Kanye went to dinner last night it just it doesn't matter you know it's not it's not going to help you move forward so I just always tell people it is a struggle because we are always in the web you know but sometimes you have to step back from the web and just be in your real life. And, and take a thoughts. deep. Take a deep breath, yeah. you know, pray, meditate, whatever you're gonna do to start your day off, but don't start it off rolling over looking at other people who live wherever, live their life. So you went to Wisconsin Law School. I did. Graduated as an attorney. You I come know. from a family of attorneys. What made you decide to leave the practice of law and discover Protect Your Pumps? Well, um, it just, it just was, it just wasn't a right fit for me at that time. So I started law school the first summer. I got a job with a judge doing like criminal work, which was interesting. I just didn't think I wanted to do that right away. And it wasn't paying, it was like an unpaid internship. So I had to get a job. So I started working at Gap in law school, just part time. And I really started liking it, like the customer service. And I was learning about business and then I got, promoted to be a manager of the Gap at Madison. So it was like really cool and I enjoyed that space of selling and retail and working with women. And so then after law school, I just took a job at Neiman Marcus in Chicago and I think everyone thought I was seriously crazy. Like, <laughs> I th I'm pretty sure they thought I was crazy because I was going to work at Neiman Marcus. I was a young attorney. I had a law degree, but it was just, it was where the path was taking me and everything has kind of worked out, so. You know at Mount Mary there is a focus on creative thought, which is so critical to, to our lives, thinking creatively. So here you are at Neiman Marcus and you're working and you happen to see people's shoes, no less the bottom of their shoes. That was quite creative that you took that thought to the next level. Do you look back at that moment? How did that come to you? Yeah, so my customers would bring their shoes in and they would spend like $1,000 on these shoes. And they were getting beat down, the soles. A lot of people, if you know about like the Christian Louboutins and they have the red painted sole and people like are so obsessed with the sole. And it cost 80 to $100 to get one pair resold and we would like send it out. And I said, hmm, that's interesting and that's kind of expensive. And then I noticed we'd have fashion shows and we put duct tape at the bottom of the shoe, the store would. So when the models walked around, the shoes didn't look worn and then they could still sell them. And I said, oh, that's cool. There should be something like duct tape, but not as tacky looking. <laughs> and so I just said, hey, you know, I can sit on this or I can try and move forward, you know? And I went home and I did my research. I saw there wasn't anything like what I wanted to do. And I just started searching the web and sourcing for manufacturers and made it happen. Women in business is a constant challenge many times. Do you feel that being a woman in business has either affected or impacted you adversely or positively? And if so, in what cases? I mean, I just think that girls rule the world. I think that like, I don't Way think it's go. been a, a, a negative at all. Um, it's an amazing support community of women out there who are business owners, who support each other, who help move each other forward. So I really don't feel like it's been a negative 
at all. And do you think you're one of a kind because you are a woman in business? Do you find that many times you're among a room filled with women or are you one of a kind? It depends. It depends. Sometimes I'll, I'll go to conferences. A lot of times, like, I'll go to tech conferences yes. and there's not a lot of women there. And I'm not really a tech business. I do a lot on the web. So I think there's certain fields where there's not as many women's, but I think overall there's are a lot of women who are starting up and are in that space. So it's great that you're doing this. We have, I told you that Mount Mary focused on creativity and we have many creatives in our audience. What special advice would you give to aspiring creatives? Um, I would just say keep making things, you know, and no one starts off making anything good, right? And so everything <laughs> is just repeated practice and working on your skills. So I was listening to this interview that Will Smith gave and he said, the, the biggest misconception is that people think talent and skill are like the same thing and talent is something you're naturally born with, but skill is only developed from hours and hours of beating at your craft. So he didn't wake up this most amazing actor, but that's hours and hours of beating at his craft at working on that. So if there's something you like to do, if something you're working towards, just continue to work on it because eventually with enough hours you'll get better. I'm so delighted that you have chosen to come back to Milwaukee as every city needs its young entrepreneurs to grow and develop. How have you found Milwaukee in terms of a business environment to spark more business? Well, I think that there's that there's movements happening, you know, definitely in different parts of the city. Uh, I've been to events. I, I heard the other day they're talking about turning Walker's Point into a tech startup hub. So, I mean, conversations like that are really exciting. Um, so I like to be a part of it, and I think there is a growing startup community here. So, One of the people who interviewed you earlier heard about your great product and said, it's so simple. Why didn't I think of that? And that really is exciting, the fact that you thought of something and you did it, and it reaches out to the audience and says, you can all do that. And it is so simple. Or did you find it extremely difficult? No, it's very simple. I mean, my product is complex. And so some of the issues with product development, I didn't have really to, ex I didn't go through that. I didn't have, I'm not like building a kid's toy and you need all these different parts. You know, this is a relatively simple product, but the simple ones are the best ones. <laughs> and are you manufacturing them here? The, they're manufactured in Pennsylvania, and then we distribute them here. And you, So your distribution site is yep. in Milwaukee. That's terrific. Yes. Now we're going to close this portion of our program, and we're going to go into a portion of Mount Mary's signature questions. These five questions are similar to those used by James Lipton, in his Inside the Actors Studio. And they're really fun and meant to give you an insight into the heart and soul, if you will, of our guest speaker. Uh, I'd like to say and acknowledge that these five questions came about as a collaboration between the student advocates involved with the Women's Leadership Institute here and the students in communication for mass media. So you ready for these questions? Yes. Okay, number one, describe your life using a song title. Okay, so I was thinking about this last night <laughs> and I went through my iTunes and said, okay, what song would work? And there's this song from Outkast, Big Boy from Outkast, and the title of it is Mama told me, and it's like all about all the lessons his mom told me, and so pretty much everything my mom has said in life has come true. <laughs> so, the, <laughs> so the song would probably be Mama told me, because I used to think my mom was just crazy, like, you don't know that, you don't know anything, and now everything she said makes perfect sense. Is your mother happy that she came today? <laughs> That's true. So Mama told me, so listen to your mom. <laughs> oh, I love that advice. <laughs> What is your largest or biggest pet peeve? Okay, let's do that one last. Okay. <laughs> Skip right, skipping along, we're going to an exciting class that you may have taken when you were in school. 
So the most exciting class I took was in college, and it was like opera operations management. But we got to tour the Hyundai plant. I went to school at Tuskegee in Alabama, and we got to tour the Hyundai plant and see like a car being made from just nothing to driving off the assembly line. It was really cool to just see how every moving part has to work together. So I just remember that class a lot. That's great. And now one of my favorite questions. So what is the most non-essential item that you have that you carry with you almost all of the time? Probably my phone <laughs> or lip gloss. Surprise. <laughs> and where do you keep it? Um, in my hand or <laughs> in my purse. <laughs> okay. And finally, number five, and we'll go back to the pet peeve. What profession, if you weren't doing what you're doing, what other profession out there would you like to try to do? Uh, I'd like to be a teacher. Oh. Tell us about that, because you're doing something wonderful in that area. Yeah, well, I'm teaching kids how to swim at the Y a couple days a week, which is really fun, and they just give so much energy. If you're feeling down, you just go hang with a bunch of seven-year-olds. Seven it's just <laughs> amazing. So, yeah, I think teaching, teaching about business, things that I've learned, I would just love to do more of that. That's great, and it's a great way to give back to the community as well. And I know you're involved in a lot of activities uh, where you actually impact all of our lives. Can you share some of those examples with us? Um, I, yeah, I mean, I've gone to do a lot of schools. I went to Westchester University in Pennsylvania. They had me come and speak to their women's group about businesses. So any opportunity I can to be involved in like helping people start up or trying to turn their ideas to how we can kind of make these into either products or services and make them real. I'm just all for helping people in that way. Find their, their souls. Absolutely. And that's great. Are you ready for the last question then? Okay. Biggest pet peeve. I think my biggest pet peeve is when people complain about the same thing over and over but don't do anything <laughs> about it. Like, if you hate your job, you know, don't call me every day about how much you hate your job if you're not looking for a new one or if you're not taking a step. You know, I'm like all for listening to problems. Like I have my own problems. I know I complain too. But like we have to be action, more action focused, you know. <laughs> how do you inspire students to think like that? That instead of thinking negatively, they can turn a negative into a positive. And in so doing, they might create a solution to something that will better all of us. How do you teach that? Um, I think, yeah, I think we just have to shift our mindset a little bit instead of looking at problems as like problems instead of opportunities, you know, and trying to make them opportunities. I mean, I've had so many things in business where it's like, for a minute, I'm like, oh my God, this is going to ruin me. This is, it, this is the worst problem ever. And then I'd have to take a step back, look at it and say, okay, how can I turn this into an opportunity and how can I either learn from this and say, hey, this isn't going to work, I'm not going to do it again, or I can tweak something from this and make it better, you know? So I just think we have to shift, and I know we all get down sometimes and things aren't going the way we think that we want them to, but oftentimes that's just the opportunity around the corner, so. Do you have people working for you in this business? Some part-time help me with social media sometimes when I don't feel like being all on that. Um, so yeah, I do have some like part-time marketing help. Which is great for our job market. So Absolutely. do you also have any internships that you might have available yeah, for students? Yeah, whoever wants to come, I would love to have you. <laughs> <laughs> I've had interns before from the Art Institute, which has worked good. Oh, great. Um, like fashion marketing students. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been exciting and they get to learn a lot, especially like with learning how social media works in terms of business, because we all use it to like connect with our friends, but it's a really powerful tool to make money too. So, And to market, which to you market, told us absolutely. was so critical to your business. Yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And now we'd like to open up the questions in the, at the floor. Uh, there's a microphone. And we'd love to have guests from our audience come up and ask Catherine, some questions. Do we have our first guest? Hello, I'm Rebecca Callis. Um, I have a question. Um, 
So we know that you have this business, and do you have? What is your next best thing? Oh, I have so many cool things in the work for the business. I'm so excited um, for the business in the next mm, three months. Like some partnerships with other businesses, some collections that we're gonna do. It's just it's really cool stuff. I want to start another business too. So I don't I'm I don't know. My brain's always going, so I just have to keep. My like put my, I don't, I'm I'm struggling to answer your question, but I'm gonna start another business soon, and I'm gonna take my business like next level soon too. <laughs> Great question. So I hope that helps you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. So can you give us a hot tip? What is your next business? Um, I <laughs> <laughs> put her on the spot here. <laughs> so I'm starting a business with my mom. And we're actually going to be doing like some body care products. It's going to be really awesome. We're working on it. It's, it's great. It's all natural products. So I love the collaboration. It's, Is it always fun working with your mom? Oh, so far. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that energy going. <laughs> so far, but we just, we're just getting started. <laughs> great, great, great. Uh, OK, next question from our audience. And please, again, state your name. <laughs> Hi, my name is Katie. I'm in the communications department here at Mount Mary. And my question for you is in terms of marketing, and I'm taking a marketing class right now, who would be your spokesperson for your product if you could pick anyone in the world? Mm, that's a good question. <sighs> Let me think. Oh, man. I think... Mm. Someone who loves shoes. Someone who loves <laughs> shoes, which is all those celebrities, but they have to like be good, you know, and stand for something. <laughs> oh, I love that. Did you repeat that. They have to. They have to be good for, and stand for something. I mean, not just like Kim Kardashian. I know she's really popular, but like I just want some more substance to the business. Um, <laughs> I uh, I did a, a post the other day about four women shoe designers because everyone knows Manola Blahnik and you know Christian Louboutin but there's the Ruthie Davis and there's the Tabitha Simmons who are just kind of starting up so I think if there was this collective of women who own their own line of shoes who promoted the product that would be really powerful to me. Uh, any connections to Sarah Jessica Parker? Sarah Jessica Parker would be awesome too she just launched a line with Nordstrom's exclusively with Nordstrom's so, yes, she would be another good person because I think she's great and she's a businesswoman. Exactly. Yes. Thank oh, you, thank Katie. You. Uh, um, that's, I hear you doing a lot of research. So you really have to know about the competition, about what's happening within the marketplace. How do you keep on top of all of that so that you can keep your business going and be better than the competition? Yeah, I mean, I definitely um, have to be in the blogs a bit, in the fashion magazines, to know what's up, and to know about new designers because it's really the way that I connect with my, with my customers is searching through things on social media through specific designers. So I have to know the designers that the product works with, and so I'm always just looking for who's a new shoe designer, who are people loving, you know, overseas, wherever. Yeah. Have you dealt a lot with the media, either local media or national media? And what was one of your most exciting moments in terms of dealing with media? Yeah, so some local media. Um, in, when I was living in Chicago, that, sh that uh, program we showed, the Made in Chicago feature was awesome. It was so fun. They came to my apartment. And, we'll um, have to update it in Made in Milwaukee. Yes, yes. <laughs> and um, Chicago Sun-Times, and then Shape Magazine, which was like a big national piece for me. The Today Show, which was amazing. I was like about to break down. It was so <laughs> great. Um, so those were the two big national um, press like features that I've had so far. And I'm just trying to get some more too. Tell us about the Today Show and how that went. So the Today Show went great. It, um, I was featured through Shape Magazine. They took like 10 products for fashion emergencies. I was in there in that magazine. It was like September of last year issue. And so they featured the product and it was really awesome and 
sales were rolling in, which I love. So it was just great. It was it was awesome. And and it opened a lot of other doors after that. The product was featured in this vanity uh, variety, variety oh, magazine. Big. They had an event that was honoring Kerry Washington and Nicole Kidman. So we were like in the gift bags for that and it was really awesome. So it opened up a lot of doors, I think, because people obviously a lot of people watch that show. And again, it proved your point about marketing. Tell people about your product and they will come. Yeah, and absolutely. And the Today Show is like you just have to keep going, you know, and getting more press features. It's not like you're on the Today Show and then you've made it. Like all the work <laughs> is done. You have to keep going. So you can be on Good Morning America the next day, you know, like you have to keep pushing those press features. We're going to help you do that, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> Who is up next to ask a question from our audience? No, go ahead, Dean. I said I'll wait after you. <laughs> <laughs> They're fighting for the floor. <laughs> Um, my name is Barbara Armstrong. And so uh, in a lot of these series, we've talked about how, um, you know, being an entrepreneur is about making success out of failure. Um, how much failure did you had until, and have until you came up with the right formula, the right piece of whatever it is that you put on the bottom of the shoe? Um, <laughs> how, how did that ha happen? And how did you feel in that process? Well, um, the process of finding it wasn't as difficult. I didn't go through so much failure then, but in trying to market and doing all kind of things, I mean, I could tell you stories for days of things that just did not work. Um, the initial product testing was kind of a few runs, a different tweaks, um, having people test it. So that was not that, um, that wasn't that crazy. But I mean, there's been things that I've done, issues with the product that didn't maybe work on a particular brand and having customer feedback and trying to tweak it from there and make the product better. So I'm always having things that kind of don't work, you know? <laughs> but um, I would say that the product was really good and I put it out and I think that's essential, like, because people want to wait until they get everything perfect, 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 and you'll be waiting forever and never put it out. So it's put it out get your feedback from people. Hey, I like this about it. I don't like this about it. And continue to kind of make your tweak. So. All right. Great. Thank you. Thanks. And just speaking of your product and getting it out there, we have a sample of your product here. Yes. Can you show it to the audience? Sure. How it's packaged and how you decided to package it because that's another part of marketing. Right. So this is um, the protector pumps is the little pouch. I mean, we've come a really long way. It was first like a Ziploc bag. It looked really terrible, okay? <laughs> I thought it was cute, but no one was buying it, and they, were, they just thought it was terrible. So this is um, just a little envelope. You have the sheets in here. I sell them single pairs. This is a three-pack, so you'd get six sheets, one for each shoe. And then there's instructions on how you put it on. And so it's really just you put your sole up, you trace it, cut, and stick it. Most people are getting... Anywhere from five to 10 wears out of one pair. It just depends on if you're just maybe going to dinner and you're not wearing it that long. But if you're like walking 20 New York City blocks, you're gonna wanna change it more frequently, so. It's great packaging. How many versions of that did you have to create this, before you got that one? Well, this is my fifth, fifth um, like run of packaging. I started with plastic bags with a sticker on it. And then I had these little pouches that I used to iron on a logo. It was really fun. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, then I went to another flat pouch and then this pouch where we have a little bit more package, rather, where we have a little bit more width, so. Great. So I'm a fashion merchandise management student and we do a lot of we, we, go, we go a lot into the market research, and I wrote a paper about intellectual property protection, which we know in fashion is, is a big deal, and there's a lot of room for intellectual theft. Absolutely. Um, when you have an idea like this, and you're in the, the startup process, how do you entrust others to help you get to where you need to be? How do you go and source manufacturers, or do you wait till you already have a patent, have your package together before you outsource, or do you make that, do you take those steps along the way to so protect your own idea? No, that's a great question. I think... Anyone that I work with in any process, always non-disclosure agreements. So if I'm working with a manufacturer and I'm giving them any ideas to what I'm using this for, 
it's always a non-disclosure with them, my current manufacturer, everyone, just because you want to keep confidentiality and then they're legally bound not to be able to kind of share your ideas or share your, your conversations with them. Um, like you said, I mean, fashion is tricky because it's all a rip off, right? Everyone rips off from everyone else. And you walk into Forever 21, and those are all high end designers' designs that they all stole and made super cheap for 20 bucks, you know? But there's a market for both of them, right? And so I think that you always just kind of have to stay ahead of the curve and be better, market better, do everything better because the IP in fashion is like a little weak, you know? But no, I'm not saying it's not important. I'm just saying there's always someone looking to do it for cheaper. Okay, can I ask so. another question since I'm already here? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Okay, so we know that you have Protect Your Pumps, and I was reading your blog, and you also have Protect Your Flats. Was that an idea from you, or did that kind of come from your market? Hey, I have these flats that I value just as well. I need something for this, too. Yeah, so that came right from, from them. They would ask all the time, I love this, but it's not big enough to fit my wedges or my flats that I just bought. Um, so protector pumps for flats, that was really just brought out of, ne like born out of necessity and what my customers were asking for. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the audience? Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> OMG. <laughs> it's that iPhone. <laughs> Hi, Kathy. Hi, Mom. <laughs> So I, first I just want to say, um, your dad and I are so proud of you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you've um, taken, taken an idea, created something, and engaged in a lot of tenacity. And I just want you to know that I really admire your stick to because I know it's been tough. It's up and it's been down. Um, and I have to say, with our upcoming venture, I've been inspired by what you've been doing. And so um, I'm so glad to be partnering with you. Thanks. I think that's going to be really great. Regardless of what happens, I think it'll just be fun. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> so my question is, <laughs> can you share what's been your most valuable learning experience in the course of... Um, the process of protect your pumps? I think the having patience, um, like you talked about the persistence, and I read a lot of stories about really successful people, and we think it's all happened overnight, but there's like a lot of years of heartache, a lot of years of being unsuccessful, a lot, a lot of years of things not working out, and I think you really have to fight through them and to keep the big picture, to keep the goals in mind. So sometimes when I'm in the thick of it and I say, oh, this week isn't going good, this day isn't going good, it's so much bigger than that week, that moment, um, and to keep all that in mind all the time. So that's probably been the biggest lesson. Just keep going. It's okay. a great question, <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Any other questions? I don't know if I want to follow up with a mom question. <laughs> I'm Marmy Clayson. I'm a Hi. faculty member here. I'm stunned when you said that you have customers in 78 countries. That's remarkable to me and wonderful. Did you anticipate that you would have that amount of success worldwide? And if I can follow up with that, how did you achieve that success, that worldwide success? So I think I wasn't even really thinking international when I started it. I was kind of just like, I'll do it here. But the web is such a powerful tool that you do have the ability to reach people from really far away. Um, so how I do it, I just literally stalk people online. <laughs> <laughs> I stalk people online and I find them who, people who are buying new shoes, people who are posting that they, um, you know, just bought a new pair of shoes and I market to them and I show them the site and I show them pictures of how it works and at the time that people just bought a pair of shoes that's when they're really excited about protecting them so I think I started using Instagram maybe a year and a half ago and I got a, a sale from like 
Qatar or somewhere really like, where is that even at, you know? <laughs> and so I emailed her and I said, hey, how did you find out about me? And she says, Instagram. And after that, I was just like a maniac with it, you know? I just was looking for everyone. So everyone's connected through the web, through social media. Everyone's super connected. And so it's great because you can reach people. Yeah. What other countries did you have you marketed to then, uh, aside from, from Canada? I mean, I do most of it in the U.S. I mean, uh, I think the other big area for me is like in the U.K. And Australia are really big markets for me, aside from the U.S. The U.S. is still probably 75% of my business. But the U.K. and Australia, I, I do a lot in and partner with bloggers there who feature the product on their blog. And so they're reaching more of that audience who's in those countries. Do you find, sorry if I'm. No, no, please. Do you find any difference in terms of a, a cultural difference in terms of marketing or is it just women in shoes are sort of universal? Um, I mean, I would say, yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't say there's a lot of difference. What I would say about, especially Europeans, like, and I noticed this also when I traveled over there is that they seem more willing to invest in like a good pair of shoes and like you buy one really good pair of shoes and you take good care of it. Whereas I think over here sometimes we're like really quantity focused. So we're just like buy 10 shoes, they're all suck, you know, but we want 10 <laughs> shoes, you know, we want them to all look good. But I think over in Europe especially like there's more of a focus on just like good quality. But you know, also you have so many of the fashion houses over there and they have a lot of access and there's so much history over there. With Thank you. Them. Thanks. Do you travel to Europe? Is there a place you want to go oh. to make appearances and talk about your product? I haven't traveled overseas for the business yet. That ju was just a personal trip, but I, um, yeah, I would love to go over and, and do um, events and talk to people. I've done things in California, New York again, in the States, California, New York, Dallas, Miami. Those are my big markets, a lot where there's like a lot of high end people like shopping and Rodeo and all that, you know. So I go to California sometimes in New York and it's good to connect with people. Uh, always. Always. And the web makes it so easy for all of us to do that. So it's terrific. Absolutely. Every woman that we've had telling us about their stories has said they've had to reject people who kept saying no. No, no, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. Has that happened to you, Catherine? And how have you gone and risen above it? Um, I mean, I think that no is always like inevitable. And sometimes no. Actually, like what did Win Wendy from Webex says a lot of the time, no is just like uh, the segue to yes, you know? <laughs> so if you That's go great. back to someone enough times, they, they might say yes, you know? So I get rejected from people all the time, from stores, from people who don't want, who think this is the dumbest thing, and that's fine, you know? But you just kind of have to keep moving forward. And also what I learned about people who are negative and who don't support or, you know, you can spend all your energy on them, but it's wasted, you know? So if you have 100 people who love your product, no, 100 people who get your product, and 95 people love it, and five people hate it and think it's terrible, why would you give all your energy to the five people who hate it? Like the 95 people are gonna help you move forward and they're gonna tell their friends and now that 95 is gonna grow to 300 people who love your product. So, you know, give more energy to the people who support and are gonna move you forward, not the people who are gonna try and tear you down. It's so. such good advice and uh, one that you have captivated in terms of making yourself successful. So it's fabulous. We have time for one more question. Do we have one more question from the floor? Hi, Catherine, I'm Otaja. Um, so here at Mount Mary, the, uh, we're really big on social justice and being involved in the community. Can you give us a little more information on, besides um, you said you, do, you help um, some of y'all learn how to swim, what other things do you do in the community and how big is that for you? So I'm glad you asked that because I was literally thinking about this today, how I want to put on a free workshop about um, like how to use social media and how to start up on the web. So I definitely do some and go out to events, but it's, it's definitely more I feel like always I could do. And I was just thinking about how I want to host a free workshop about how to start a business online. Um, 
I was involved in this group in Chicago and we had like an entrepreneur kind of boot camp for people that I would go to. So I would like to bring that to Milwaukee because I think there's a lot of people who could use the message. Nice. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for that great question. And the more successful you are, the more you can give back to Absolutely. the communities you serve. And you and I had talked about that and how important it was to you and your family to build a strong community in the areas where you do business because yes. it's a cycle. It helps everybody. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, audience. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for being here today. I want to thank particularly the student advocates of the w Women's Leadership Institute here at Mount Mary for making this program and the programs all year as successful as they are. And I'd also like to thank four business interiors for this beautiful and very comfortable, I might add, furniture uh, for us to use today. Of course, I would like to give and extend a heartfelt thank you to you, Catherine. Thank you. Your story is wonderful and has been an inspiration to all of us here and enlightening. We can't wait to hear about your next best things, and I'm, I'm sure we'll all be staying tuned to hear all about what you're going to do in the future. Be sure to follow the Women's Leadership Institute on social media or watch their website for the final fall lineup. And I can give you some information today that our first program will be on Tuesday, so mark your calendars, Tuesday, September 23rd, and will feature Pat Pierman from GE Healthcare. Thank you for being here from Mount Mary's Women's Leadership Institute, where potential becomes purpose. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you so much.